Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today I want to talk to you about my two weeks with Ryzen 3 1200, the cheapest Ryzen currently available on the AM4 platform. So the first thing I want to mention is that I'm a pretty heavy user, around 8 to 10 hours per day on my PC editing, gaming and just general everyday usage. So the first thing I found is that upgrading to AM4 or switching to the AM4 platform is a little more expensive because you have to consider the price of DDR4 RAM and the fact that I would wholeheartedly recommend a B350 motherboard over the cheaper A320 options. Now being a budget gamer I usually recommend the cheapest option available but I have to say that Ryzen 3 definitely benefits from an overclock the likes of which you can't achieve on an A320 board. Now it's obvious that AMD probably did this just to try and make you spend more money on the platform but I have to say that the difference between an overclocked Ryzen 3 1200 and a stock one is night and day when it comes to both editing and gaming, or at least I found. Putting the pricing aside, and I want to talk to you about a couple of issues I had. First of all, when I overclocked the CPU itself, it would keep resetting every time I restarted my PC, and it made me wonder what it was, but it turns out that the CMOS battery in the MSI Tomahawk board was just on its way out, and quickly replacing that remedied the situation. Nothing to do with the processor, but I thought that it was worth mentioning anyway. The second problem I had was when it came to editing in Premiere Pro and exporting a file, I found that a couple of times the system would just switch off, which was quite odd. Not switch off in the sense of just turning off, but I would lose signal from my PC to the monitor, and the CPU fan speed increased. So my first assumption was obviously thermals. Is the CPU getting too hot, or is the heatsink not seated properly? Upon further investigation, everything like that was absolutely fine. Temperatures were fine, and I found that just taking the Ryzen 3 back down to the stock speed and then overclocking it again slowly back to 3.8 gigahertz completely fixed that issue and it's not something that I've experienced since. I can't explain what it was but all I know is that underclocking the chip again or downclocking it back to the stock speeds and then overclocking it again totally fixed it. What it was I really don't know but it's all sorted now. And while we're on the subject of editing, I will say that using things like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, the two main programs I use to put these videos together, does feel a ton snappier than it did with my old i5-4460. You saw the figures from the other review, and the i5 definitely renders things quicker, but the overall experience with Ryzen 3 just feels a lot quicker. Things are done so much quicker. Previewing the video in full resolution playback in Premiere Pro doesn't lag at all as it did with my i5. I mean, it would stutter sometimes because the CPU couldn't cope with the load. Um, but with Ryzen 3, I haven't experienced any of that. Editing is definitely where this thing shines. And when it comes to gaming, I found myself having to turn a few settings down a little bit. As you probably saw from yesterday's video, if you watched it, I recently bought Prey. Um, at first, the game defaulted to the high settings, but I did experience quite a bit of stutter. Not so much constant stutter, but every five seconds or so, the game would totally freeze up, which did hinder the gameplay experience just a little bit. Turning things down to medium, though, quickly resolved that issue. Again, I checked to make sure it wasn't a GPU bottleneck, but it turns out that the CPU was causing the problems there. And when it comes to gaming, a Ryzen 5 might be the better option if you can stretch to the slightly more expensive price tag, although you really won't have a problem with Ryzen 3 in gaming at all. Just expect to have to turn things down a little bit. Just like the difference between i3s and i5s. If you buy an i3 processor, you'll probably have to run games on a lower setting than you would with an i5 processor, but it's still a decent processor to have, and the same applies here. Especially when you consider the £100 or dollar price tag. So I'd like to reiterate about the benefits of the overclock. I've got some prices on screen here. The difference between the cheapest A320 board and the cheapest B350 board there, just in case you want to see that. 
and then you can make up your minds as to whether or not you think that difference is worth it to you for the extra performance. Will I be switching to the AM4 platform? Absolutely. I know that my old i5 definitely outperformed the Ryzen 3 when it came to things like gaming, but I find myself mainly editing these days, and for that, Ryzen really is a fantastic choice, especially at this price point. I can't say whether or not yet I'll be upgrading to Ryzen 5. It's likely because the price jump isn't that much if I'm totally honest but for now Ryzen 3 is definitely satisfying my PC orientated needs and I think it's definitely a great choice if you are shopping around for a new build and you want to get yourself onto the latest platform. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and my thoughts on the Ryzen 3 1200. After two weeks of usage, if you did leave a like down below, if you didn't leave a dislike, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.